My name is Jeff Martin. Uh, along with my wife, Mickey, we owned a gym called Brand X. Yesterday, when we started, I believe it was Mike who asked, why did you get, why'd you get into uh, being a, a trainer? And almost everybody answered, to change lives. Remember that? Yeah, change lives. So when you work with adults, it's the opportunity to change lives is there. It's awesome. We love changing lives. But when you work with youth, you have the opportunity to shape lives. And that's impact, which is what the weekend's about. So I hope today to um, talk a little bit about Brand X, uh, talk about some of the kids we trained, at least one of them, and inspire you to work with kids. Talk about the pathway we took to train kids, to produce kids who moved really well and were great, outstanding athletes. And then talk about a um, pathway for business success after talking to hundreds of gym owners and thousands of people who train kids. What were the pathway, what's the pathway that they took to be successful? Our gym brand X. It was about an hour plus outside of San Diego, up in the mountains. Little sleepy um, farming and ranching community. You blinked, you were through it. Every time we had a uh, seminar, I get a phone call, at least one phone call, and it goes something like this. Hello, Brand X? I'm lost. I'm pretty sure I'm lost. Uh, where are you? Well, I'm on a dirt road. I passed a chicken ranch. I see fields and cows. Yeah, we're about a quarter mile up on the left. <laughs> that was Brand X. In 2004, we became the fifth CrossFit affiliate, which is a really great thing to think about. Uh, Want to take something that's never been done before, nobody knows about, and bring it to a one stop, stoplight town and make youth fitness, because that's what we became known for, known for um, youth fitness. So the goal of our youth program was to have kids leave our program who are confident, confident, and motivated to live active lives. We wanted to give them the tools to excel at whatever activity, task, or sport life threw at them. We did this by making them move well, making them strong, and increasing their physical literacy, which people see as athleticism. We had kids compete at the highest levels in youth athletics. Some go all the way into, into uh, professional sport. And we had great success outside of um, just athletics. We produced 10 valedictorians out of our gym. We had kids go to uh, Ivy League schools. Just had one of our kids um, graduate from MIT. Kids who went to all four military academies. Three of our kids went to the Air Force Academy and created the, the official CrossFit affiliate at the Air Force Academy. We ran our program from 2004 to 2018, when we shut our gym down and chased our grandkids across the country. In that time frame, we had 75 kids that were with us longer than five years, 30 kids that were with us longer than 10 years. We got to see our clients grow up. I want to tell you about one of those kids. Her name is Sarah. Sarah came into the gym. She was four years old. She didn't play sports. She didn't do little girl gymnastics like almost every girl does. She just came to the gym. She was um, homeschooled, so she didn't have PE. The gym was her PE. And from four years old to 18, Sarah matriculated through our program. At 18, she graduated from high school one of our valedictorians, and went away to, uh, to college. When she got to college, she said to herself, I want to meet people and get involved. 
and she decided she would go out for a sport. Never did sports before. Decided, had the confidence to go, I'm gonna go out for a sport. She looked around and said, what would be fun? And she saw the archery club. So she's gonna go out for the archery club. So she shows up on the day of the, of the uh, tryouts. She shows up and they divide the people in. Here's people who have done archery before, who are competitive. Here's people who've never picked up a bow before, don't know how to shoot it. Sarah, you go in this group. And they go in the group and they, they um, the, the group Sarah's in, they learn how to shoot the bow. About halfway through the day, they set up three targets. It's gonna be their tryouts. And one near, one in the middle, and one way far away. So the coach goes up, grabs an arrow, aims at the, at the near target, releases, bullseye. Kids go up, they take their shots. A lot of them did really well, and they got bullseyes. The second target, same thing, coach goes up, draws, aims, fires, bullseye. Kids come up, they didn't do so well this time. A few of them got, uh, got the bullseye, Sarah included. Dangerously close. Third target, it's way out there. Coach comes up, grabs, sorry, the target's here. <laughs> Releases, arrow arcs up, comes down, another bullseye. All the kids come up, they're taking their shots. No one's getting anywhere near the target. Sarah goes up, grabs her arrow, does what she's been told, aims, releases, that arrow arcs up, and at the top, at the apex of that arrow's flight, I want to leave it right there. And I want to go forward about six months. Six months into the, into the future, I get a, a phone call. I get a lot of phone calls. Phone call, hey, it's Jeff. And I hear the voice of a friend of mine who's in the UK, and he says, hey, mate, because that's how they talk in the UK. And uh, I say, Sup, dude, because American. <laughs> and um, he said, I want to tell you about a little girl that I was training. I said, cool. He said, uh, she's, she's a rower. She had a huge engine, huge engine. But she wasn't strong enough to compete at the, upper, at, the, at the higher levels. And I said, awesome, that's a cool story. What's that got to do with me? And um, he said, she came to my gym. She trained with me for a couple of years and she got strong and she, made it, she uh, was able to compete at the junior um, national levels in the UK, which is awesome. So that's awesome. He said she got a scholarship to go to the US and row for a D1 school. I thought that's awesome too. She, she called me the other night. Really? What'd she have to say? She said that she was talking about a freshman. A little girl came on who'd never rode before. She said this girl tried out, killed everybody on the ergs. Walked in the weight room, crushed everybody in the weight room. She did so well, she learned to row so fast that as an 18 year old who'd never, never rode before, she made the varsity boat at a D1 school. And I said, well, that's a real, that's a cool story. And he said, yeah and she was wearing a shirt that said Brand X. Sarah tried out for, for a sport. She tried out for rowing. She made the rowing team. She impressed a senior who had a scholarship in that sport so much that she called her coach. And her coach said, I think I know the coach, her coach, and called me. Sarah's exceptional. Wouldn't you agree? It's an exceptional story. But she's not unique from our gym. We can have four or five stories like that of kids walking onto a college campus, trying out for a sport they never played before, and making the team. So the question is, how do you build a Sarah? How do you build kids who have this kind of capacity? 
this kind of ability. So I'm going to take my first shot here. Look at that. Yay, thank you. Thank you. I didn't fall. I, I promise I'll fall before the end of, this, end of the uh, We use a method we call base build boost. In base, we teach kids how to control their own body and space. In build, we have them apply these lessons to movement and external objects. And in boost, we train. So, again, I did it. Yay. What's that look like in base? Well, in base, what we're trying to do is teach a kid to be kinesthetically aware and proprioceptive. To understand where their body is in relation to its own body, you know, to their own body, and where their body is in relation to other things. This is fundamental to, to doing well in sport or anything in, in life. What does it look like if a child isn't kinesthetically aware or doesn't understand proprioception? We had a young girl come into our gym, name's Jennifer. Jennifer's a very smart, smart young lady, did very well in school, but she liked to live in books and she didn't like to live outside. So she never, she had very limited um, experience with movement. First class, she didn't want to be there. First class, I had the kids run out, the door, out our big doors, come back in, and they were supposed to show up at the whiteboard and um, we were gonna go over the workout. So three, two, one, go, they all run out the door, they come back in, I'm standing there and I'm counting them, blah, 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 blah. And I violate the one root thing that is the most important thing about um, being a youth trainer. I've lost a child. Uh-oh. So I run, or what passes for running for me, out to the, to the door, and I look out. There is a um, small tree that's planted directly outside of our roll-up doors. It's got about a six inch in diameter trunk. And I see Jennifer. So I yell, hey, Jennifer, come on in. I yell louder because clearly she doesn't hear me. Jennifer, come on in. So finally I yell, Jennifer, I can see you. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Jennifer was like my three-year-old granddaughter. My three-year-old granddaughter will play hide and seek. She will literally sit in the middle of our floor throw a blanket over her, and I play the game. I don't see you. She thinks if she can't see me, I can't see her. She doesn't have an appropriate perception where other things are in relation to herself. The second story about Jennifer is not quite as funny as that one. We did a workout with box jumps in it. We demonstrated the box jumps. We gave different heights for the box jumps. We gave, demonstrated regressions, things like that. Three, two, one, go. Jennifer jumps onto a box. She clears the box with her feet by this much, and then she folds her knees up and lands on her shins. Every trainer in the place rushing over, Jennifer, Jennifer, are you okay? She's embarrassed, but she goes, yeah, I'm fine. And we said, you should step up. No, I can do this. And she proceeds to jump up in the air, fold her legs up, and land on top of the box jump again. Jennifer didn't know where her feet were in relation to her own body, in relation to the, to the box. She didn't know how to control her own body. So Jennifer's an extreme point. But the kids that walk in our gym often are not aware of where their body is in space or how to move their body. And that's becoming more and more prevalent as we move through, um, as our culture changes. 10 years ago, kids came home from school and played outside. That doesn't happen so much anymore. So, what, how do you work with kids like this? Can you teach them to squat? Well, squat has a lot of moving parts in it. It's hard to figure out. So one of the things we found worked with kids was we wanted to focus on what we call movement skills. Movement skills are pieces and parts of movement. They're irreducible. 
things that you can't make any smaller. You can't make smaller externally rotating the femur. It is what it is. You can't make smaller hinging at the hip. We need to teach these pieces and parts to kids, and then we add them together to make movement. So I'd like to touch um, y'all to stand up. We're gonna go through our first movement. Just kind of go through a movement skill. And this movement skill is what you're seeing up here. We call this waiting in the outfield. You've all seen it, right? Person sitting out in the middle of the outfield and they're just waiting. We also call this, I just ran a 200 meter sprint <laughs> for the older kids. So all I want you to do is feet a little bit wider than your shoulders, hands on your thighs, shoulders down, and you're gonna hinge back and come down on, and I want your thumbs on the inside of your knees. Thumbs should be pointing straight down into your foot. That's the position we teach. Stand up. Kids, run out the door. Come back to the waiting in the outfield position. We, we cement this position. Have kids um, make it so that they replicate it exactly the same way each time, and then we can add things together, add, them, add pieces together to do other things. Go ahead, sit down. Thank you. So, in base, we're teaching movement skills. When you're working with kids, break things down as small as possible. Number one, make things down as small as possible. Make them learn that position, those pieces. Make sure that we're not hurrying them on to the next step. Does that make sense? Two. Two times I did it, that's awesome. When we're in the build phase, we're going to apply what we learned in boost, or build, sorry, in base, to movement and to external objects. We're gonna use things like tempo training, pausing. We are going to limit range of motion And we're going to limit intensity. <gasps> okay. So what I mean by that? Limiting intensity. If I want a child to learn how to squat well, and that is my goal, I want you to squat well, and I say to that child, I want you to do as many squats as you can in one minute, how many good squats do I get? This is a word problem. Zero. Zero good squats. I can get intensity, but I get it elsewhere. So when limit volume, limit intensity, I say to the kids, we're gonna do five squats. We're gonna do them tempo style. When you're done with that, you're gonna do 10 burpees and a 100 meter sprint. Then you come back in, you can do five squats, tempo style, and repeat. I still get the intensity, but I have them slow down and accomplish the skill that I'm trying to get them to accomplish. In this phase, what we want to do is we want to take those movement skills we, we, we um, cemented for the children, and we want them to become global strategies for movement. So I'm going to have you stand up a second time, and we're going to work on this. So we're going to go back into that waiting in the outfield position. Thumb, thumbs are pointed straight down. And what you're gonna notice, if your thumbs are pointed straight down into your, into your knots of your shoes, is your shins are fairly perpendicular. Your back is fairly, fairly, fairly flat. Now I want you to imagine that you have taken a kettlebell and lifted it up so the handle is at the knee height. And you reach inside, grab that, and all I want you to do is push your hips forward and stand up. Then replace that kettlebell come back to that position and stand back up. I've limited the range of motion so they can have success and learn how to lift something. 
and we'll lower that over time. Let's go back to that waiting in the alpha position. Here, I want you to lift your hands into a Y and rotate your hands up. Very good. Now I want you to sit down. Very good. And stand back up. So I can take a movement skill and I can apply it to different movement patterns. And those children understand that this movement that they've done is now a global strategy for different movements. Does that make sense? Good. Number two, sit down for, again, thank you. So number two, we're going we're gonna to move the movement skills, make them global strategies. We're going to use techniques like tempo, limiting range of motion, pausing, limiting volume, limiting intensity. Okay. Finally, if we've done this right, we can move into boost. In boost, we can increase load, we can increase intensity, we can increase volume, we can increase complexity. If a child knows how to squat well and we ramp them up, there's nothing wrong with having the back squat 500 pounds or deadlift 500 pounds. We can increase the volume because it actually makes sense. We can increase intensity because it actually makes sense. I can now have that kid do squats, as many squats as possible for a minute. Only boy to make uh, the teen games 14, 15, 16, or 17 years old. Um, pretty, pretty awesome kid from Spain. Um, this boost phase is incredibly important. Enough, en enough of this. Um, <laughs> now, it's, now they're just showing off. Okay. We, can, we can, if we built these kids upright, we can maximize their training potential and maximize their potential when they, when they um, go out into the real world. Does that, make, does that all make sense? Awesome. So I'm going to get out of the way because Sarah's arrow is coming down now. Coming down and Sarah hits the bullseye, the farthest target. She didn't just hit the bullseye, she splits the coach's arrow. She Robin Hoods the arrow, something they had never seen before. But Sarah decided she wanted to row. So what does this take? What does it take to get kids to this position? Silence. Okay. Silence is fine. I'll answer the question. It takes time. What do we have to do if we're gonna if we have if we want to have time to work with kids? We gotta have to have, to have a successful business. We have, to make, we have to make money for the gym and the coaches have got to be making enough money to want to stick around for that to happen. We've talked to, I don't know how many gyms, <laughs> hundreds of gyms, thousands of coaches, and we've you know, distilled down what those things are that kids, that uh, gyms need to do to ramp the program up and be successful. Just like when you want to maximize a child's training potential, there's certain things you need to do at the beginning of this 
to make it to more to uh, assure it or be more apt to um, have the potential to uh, excel at the far end. So we use the same method, base build boost, to build your business. Base. Base is building a business foundation. Boost is applying it within your gym. I'm sorry, a build is applying it within your gym. And boost is going outside the gym and growing your program. In base, we want to address the things that uh, cause um, programs not to, not to, ex to um, excel and then uh, set them up with the things that we know are going to help them excel. So often when we look at people, people's gyms and they're running a youth program, we say, why are you hiding your youth program? What, what, why can't, um, you know, when people look at your gym, do they see that you're running a youth program? So what are the things that, that we need to take away or that we need to make sure that um, we're doing that we can uh, su succeed when we're running a youth program? The first one is education. Knowing how to work with kids. So I get this phone call once a month. And the phone call goes to something like this, ring. Hey Jeff, I'm going to start a youth program. Awesome. I love to hear from people who are going to start a youth program. So um, I need to have some programming. Cool. Um, our programming relies on our education. And they say, well, I just need the programming. I'm going to start Monday. Okay. I'm going to start Monday. Um, What's your education? I don't need the education yet. I'm going to run the program. I'm going to get it up and running. I'm going to make money, and then I'll come back and take the pro and take the uh, education later. So, step off that phone call for a second. Think about running a program. This this phone call comes up. I don't know how many times. It, it really, yeah, two to three times a month maybe. And I say I say to them in the nicest way possible. If you were running any other business and you told somebody, I'm going to go into the business and then I'm going to get, get um, the education I need to, exceed at the, to excel at this business, what do you think they'd say? Right. Can it happen? Sure. You can start a mechanics business and you can look at, start by looking at YouTube. And you might succeed. But it's way harder to do it that way. The second thing we, we hear is people say they don't set their business structure up correctly. Ask them, what are, the, what are your business goals? Can't really tell me. I want a successful business. Dude, that's like saying I want to lose weight. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything. We have to have goals that we can hit. Secondly, we'll say, what are the goals of your program? I ask this online to people in, in, in Facebook groups all the time. What's the goal of your youth program? Or when they call me, what's the goal of your youth program? I'll either get silence or they'll say something like, fun. I want my kids to have fun. We all want our kids to have fun. It's important. The um, thing is, parents aren't going to pay $120 a month to have their kids come have fun. We need to have goals set within the program and that parents will pay for, that parents want to achieve for their, for their kids. So in your business, when you're setting up your business, identify what do parents need, what do parents want. That's where you start with the goals of your program. When, we, when people set up their youth program, is it readily, or readily apparent when they walk in the door that a youth program is running in the gym? 
or is it hiding in the back? At Brand X, we had pictures all around the, the uh, entryway, entryway of kids working out, kids having fun in the classes. We had a case off to the side where they had medals, awards, t-shirts that they'd won. We had use specific schedules. We had handouts that discuss what our program was about. In the SOPs we talk about with our, with our um, training centers and with our plug and play people, we set up SOPs for when a parent walks through the door. How do you talk to that parent? What do you hand them? What do they see? How do you talk to them after the, after the class? How do you lead them down the path of signing up? If you want it to be successful, it needs to be something that parents see. When we talk about setting up the program, we have to understand who is our client. The parent is the client. We work with child, children. We do what's best for kids, but the parent is the client. We have to set the program up to, to uh, meet the parent's goals and needs. We also need to understand that oftentimes we get very excited about opening up youth programs and we market internally. We set the program up to meet the goals of the members of our gym. But if we want a really thriving youth program, we have to be able to go outside the program. So if we're going to be looking at things like, uh, what time do I run my classes? Maybe it's good to, to do things like pull Facebook groups to find out when the best class time is versus your members. We want to be really detailed so that we can set this business up so it runs automatically. Every trainer in my gym, whether they worked with kids or not, knew when somebody walked through the door what they were going to say. Here's the goals of our program. Here's what you need to see. Here's what we need to do. It's our SOPs for a new parent coming, through, coming in the door. Does that make sense to everybody? Next, when you're starting your program, launch, do a soft launch. Now we want to launch internally. These people love you. Your gym members already love you. If you open up and say, I'm going to run a kids program, and they say, what's the kids program about? And you're not done with all of your SOPs yet. You can tell them, we're going to have kids stand on their heads for 30 minutes. They're going to go, that sounds amazing. In a soft launch with your members, those people are very forgiving. You can test all of your SOPs, find out what's missing, what's not working well, what, we, what holes we have to fill, all of those things, and you're gonna have a forgiving crowd. If you've gone out and gotten people to come in, you have one or two opportunities to make an impression on them, sign them up, and your program's not running well, those people leave, you don't have a chance to get them in again. So we want to launch internally. We want to test and challenge our SP SOPs. And finally, we want to begin to educate parents. In our um, certification, we have a whole section with handouts to start discussions with parents on. You should develop those things. We want to educate our parents on why our program is foundational to their child's success and not an activity. Write that down if you can, because what we don't want to do, we want everything we want to do, we want to define our program as something that is not an activity. Activities are things like the bounce house, going ice skating. Those are things that you can take your kid in and out of. Something that's foundational is like math, science, reading. These are things that are going to help your kid further down the line. We want to build parents' awareness of why our program is foundational to them, to their child. Every program that we've talked to, the ones that are making half a million or 300,000 in youth, in their youth programs, every one of them says the parents are their biggest marketing tools. 
understanding that those parents are going to be out sitting at the soccer game and telling the people next to them, the reason my kid's not getting pulled out is because she goes to XYZ gym. Finally, we can go out and we can grow our program. We can use the parents to market for us. And we build that youth strength and conditioning program. That youth strength and conditioning program is our base. It's the base of what we're doing. From there, we can begin to stack programs. I can split off and have a youth barbell class. Our youth barbell class was amazing. We had 35 kids in it, 35 to 40 kids in it. We had um, almost every one of those kids, probably 90 to 95 percent of the kids who were in our youth barbell class were uh, kids who had been disenfranchised from sport or were not in sport or had never been in sport. We set over 100 state and national records with our powerlifting, with our teens in our powerlifting. Very strong. They walked out of that program with confidence. They saw themselves differently. If you have these, the, 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 the base of that youth strength and conditioning program, you can now do things like basketball season starting. Two months before basketball season is you're going to do a, a camp for basketball players, strength and conditioning camp for basketball players. Um, as an example, I just got asked to work with a, a, a um, Pee Wee football team. 75 kids three times a week, what do you think that costs? It's going to be nice, nice for us. Um, the key, though, is to set it up so it runs efficiently. You have a good marketing plan, marketing uh, group with your, with your parents, and then you grow that base, that, that strength and conditioning program for the kids.